the sheriff's here. Dr. Satanovich. Everybody's here? Ready? Okay. Gretchen, are we okay? Okay. All right. Good evening, everyone. Today is September 2nd, 2021. Um, we are at the Emergency Operations Center and want to give uh, an update on today's activities. So, as we have mentioned before, and I have mentioned before, pre storm, and, and goodness knows Chief Tibbetts and Chief Brian Adams have mentioned it before, the dangers after the storm are just as serious as during the storm. Many people are using generators, and there is a real risk of fires and carbon monoxide poisoning from the toxic engine exhaust. The carbonide, carbon monoxide poisoning is absolutely what they call a silent killer. And unfortunately, we had fatalities today from this exact type of incident. And um, Chief Tibbetts is going to have to go over that. But we lost three people in our community because of carbon monoxide poisoning. So certainly our prayers are with that family that this tragedy continues for that family. Also, we have had a number of generator fires and others rushed to the hospital for carbon monoxide poisoning. Thank God it was not fatal for them, but this is not good news uh, for us in Jefferson Parish today, obviously. Um, Want to give a gas update, and I know fuel is the big issue, and as I said yesterday, um, this was our message to Senator, um, Senator Kennedy, Congressman Scalise, and the Governor Edwards about the need for fuel. I was able to um, have a great conversation with Mr. Tom Harris, who's the Secretary of the Department of Natural Resources. So um, I want people to understand that it's not necessarily the issue at your local gas station. People think they don't have generators or they don't have employees to come to work. That's why the gas station's closed. Many do have generators. Many do have employees. The issue is that um, for this hurricane, and, and I liken it to us taking a double whammy with this hurricane. If this hurricane had hit in Florida uh, or maybe Texas they, and, and the roads were passable, the fuel would not be so much an issue because they would be using our fuel from our refineries. Unfortunately, our refineries got hit. So not only are we dealing with the normal issues of a storm, but we also have a fuel issue on top of it because we produce the fuel. So for this hurricane, it hit eight of our refineries, which represent two-thirds of the Louisiana refining capacity. Those eight refineries that were hit and are down also represent 13 percent of the country's refining capacities. So the issue there is that refineries don't have electricity either. Um, refineries also need nitrogen to produce, and the nitrogen plant did not have electricity as well. So gas trucks that come and, and supply our gas stations with, with the um, replenishment of fuel or having to wait in line, just like cars are having to wait in line for the gas station, well, the gas trucks are having to wait in line at the racks. And where my understanding is many of the racks, they would pick up gas in Kenner, they're having to go to Baton Rouge, and their wait time is longer. And so um, this is the issue with gas. So it's a, a much bigger issue. It's at the source. Refineries, you just can't turn a switch on. Um, it takes them several days to get to full capacity once they are able to get the nitrogen, which is relying on the electricity, and once they can get um, electricity. So um, that is the issue, and I have been assured that much higher levels of government are working on this issue. We're trying to get inventory from other states and other, other supply chains. The message to residents who are still out of town is that this community is not ready to have you back, unfortunately. We still don't have electricity. We have gas issues. Um, obviously, the water and sewer we're making improvements on, but without, without electricity and gas, it's very, very difficult um, to put our community back together. And we are making strides every day. Um, but as more things come back online, this will change. But as of now and as of today, we're still encouraging residents to stay put. And many people here would like to leave, but of course gas is the issue. I wanna talk about restoration efforts that are going on um, in Lafitte. There, the island is still being dewatered with pumps. Um, there are supplies that we will be able to construct a bridge on the Barataria side. Remember, the vessels hit the swing bridge um, and we don't have access to the Barataria side. So this will be an operation with the state Louisiana National Guard, which have been incredible partners to us during this whole whole storm, as well as DOTD, to um, 
bring another bridge back. And the Lafitte Depart Fire Department has 20 extra firefighters from the State Fire Marshal's Office and GOSEP that will allow the Lafitte Fire Department to get some much needed rest because they have been so busy you know, even before this storm. So it's good to see some supplemental resources and reinforcements heading to Lafitte. Um, Chief Brian Adams will be here to talk about several tra tragic fires that they had to respond to last night in the middle of the night. Have to commend his team. They actually had to put out those fires by boat. Um, so he will give you more on that, um, the, that incident. And they were able to save many homes, although many homes did burn, they were able to save many more. Grand Isle, um, has ordered a flotilla for lodging purposes for our teams. Dewatering the island with the portable pumps has already begun. There's a target date of Tuesday, September 7th to, mo to mobilize our emergency response teams to begin recovery on the island. So that is for our emergency response teams to be on the island and the target date is September 7th for that. The operation at PARD continues for our PARD recreation site. For anyone who wants to get out of here, this is for medically vulnerable people. This is for people who, have, um, who we, we rescued. Obviously, those people are out already. You don't have to have a reason to want to leave. You just need to want to leave. They, they, you don't have to be medically vulnerable. You just want to get out of here. Um, you go to PARD, or you can call 349-5360. That's 504-349-5360. Um, and our transit will pick you up. And Sarah Babcock is here. We'll go into much more detail about this operation, but um, that I, I stopped at that operation today. It's busier than it has been. Um, and um, people are actually a little older and a little bit, um, lack of a better word, sicker, if you will. So we're fortunate to have the pod distribution that happens the, the, um, from the Louisiana National Guard. Again, that is, um, two locations, the Alario Center on the West Bank at the Shrine, and the Shrine on Airline on the East Bank. Helen Cox will open in Harvey tomorrow. All of these pod sites are open from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. to get ice, water, and MREs. And also, the Louisiana Guard is operating those sites for us, but also they're responsible for um, security missions throughout the parish. We are getting a, a tremendous amount of outpouring of support from so many nonprofits, private institutions for donations to our parish, and we're very, very grateful for that. We have been able to centralize those locations, um, the, that information. So please, it's donations at jeffparish.net. If you have donations that you can bring to our parish, we will get that out to our public um, as soon as possible. We, we need everything, water, ice, food, bulk fuel, tarps, cleaning supplies, clothes, baby supplies, toiletries, um, anything we will take and we'll be very grateful for. So again, um, if you're outside and wanting to help and you have the means to uh, bring us donations, it's donations at jeffparish.net. Our roads are open, you can get to Jefferson Parish. For charging stations for your cell phone or oxygen tank, um, oxygen tank exchange. Remember, it's Fire Station 20 at 4110 Hudson Street in Metairie and Fire Station 81 at 808 MacArthur in Harvey. Um, again, the nightly curfew is still in effect until 6 a.m. Monday morning. Mark is going to give an update. Mark Drews is going to give an update on public works. Uh, we made lots of headway in the water and sewer department today, um, and Mark will expound on those efforts. We want you to remember to conserve the water you use in your home because all of that goes into the sewer system um, and we want to minimize the amount um, of backups we have. The boil water advisory is still in effect. Even if you have, you have water in your home, the boil water advisory is still in effect. So remember, boiled or bottled water for drinking, ice making, brushing your teeth, washing dishes, and food prep. A reminder that our transit is not operating. It is only taking people to their um, dialysis appointments, the, those patients. The debris contract has been activated. Um, the target date for that to start is September 6th. Garbage pickup target date is again Monday, September 6th. Please remember to separate your debris from your regular garbage. Those are two separate contracts and we need them separated. And reminder that recycling is suspended until further notice. Uh, FEMA is embedded here at us, um, and as well as at all of our point of distribution pod sites. So you can register. You can also register online at disasterassistance.gov or 
3362. They are telling me, um, the FEMA representatives are telling us that register, even though you don't think you might qualify, go ahead and register anyway. Our office and our schools are closed until further notice. Um, please remember to call our EOC, our, our Emergency Operations Center, at 504-349-5360 if you have any needs. Uh, we have all the departments here that can respond or get that information to the right folks. Text JP Alert to 888-777 or JP Noticias to 888-777. I want to give the state mental health line because I know this is very stressful time for everyone. Sometimes just being able to talk to someone um, can make you feel a lot better. We, we know that from just living life. Being able to talk about it um, gives you great, great relief. And the feelings that you are having um, are probably the same feelings that other people are having. So we encourage um, you to talk to someone. So the state mental health line is 1-800-256-2522. We have set up an extension of our Jefferson Parish web, uh, website to inform about all storm-related activity. It's www.jeffparish.net forward slash storm. Right, Gretchen? It's storm, not plural. Okay. www.jeffparish.net storm forward slash storm. Let me say it again. www.jeffparish.net forward slash storm. Uh, remember to be patient. Uh, everyone on our teams, everyone across departments, everyone is working hard for you to bring our community back together. This is just uh, an incredible disaster, um, but I'm, I'm so proud and grateful and thankful to work alongside many of these people. Um, I think some of us were able to wash our clothes uh, finally and take a shower and those simple things uh, give us energy. If you have ice cream and you can give it to one of our employees, please do that. You don't understand the simplest thing can live someone's day and keep them going. A thank you would be nice. I know people are impatient, but um, our, our people who are working this site have been away from their families. Some people have not even um, been to their homes yet. So um, I think it would go a long way to our teams who are just really working hard. And I, I know people are, um, I heard some criticism on the radio today, and I was not happy to hear it because um, I know the men and women who are working this across all sectors um, who are working so hard to put us back together again. So I personally want to thank everybody who is involved in this effort. We are giving it everything. This is the hardest many of us have worked in our lives and I, I can tell you that truthfully um, to put us back together again so from me uh, I'm honored to be working alongside of you we will get to brighter days and we can say this is because of our work that we got there so thank you so much okay next up we will have our sheriff of Jefferson Parish Sheriff Joseph Lepinto Thank you, Madam President. I'll be very brief tonight. Uh, operations in Lafitte continue with a high water vehicle south of the Goose Bay Bridge. Uh, you know, those are still unaccessible, so we'll have people in there. We assisted the fire department last night in those fires to be able to get our boats mobilized to get personnel across um, the waterway in order to try to fight that fire and prevent additional losses of, the, of homes over there. Uh, you know, good work during the middle of night to be able to try to do that, especially very dark situations, you know, making that happen. Uh, crime is, uh, you know, about stable from the, where we were uh, over the past few days. Uh, crime always exists in Jefferson Parish, uh, like any place with a large population a uh, total of 10 arrests last night for various offenses uh, not necessarily for looting could have been domestic offenses uh, but uh, not many arrests that are being made our calls of service are still uh, handling disturbances and those types of things and uh, we'll continue to do so uh, good news is uh, we are still running double shifts uh, all of the detectives are working and, and working 12-hour shifts and, and double shifts on it. Uh, so, we, again, we have more deputies out there um, uh, with a very big presence. If you see anything uh, suspicious, see something that just doesn't look right, uh, give us a call. Let us investigate it. Make sure it, uh, you know, the person belongs in the area is either checking on somebody. Uh, we don't mind checking on them so that way you don't have to do so. Uh, we'd rather be safe than sorry. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we're going to have our East Bank Fire Chief, Chief Dave Tibbetts. Thank you, Madam President. Um, first off, as Chief of the Department, we want to express our sympathy to the family that lost the members today in a tragic accident. Um, with that said, I want to bring up a few points that we've been working with uh, the last few days. Since 7 a.m. yesterday morning, 
the, as a parish, we've responded to over 70 calls for service in dealing with carbon, mon carbon monoxide detectors or people feeling ill from carbon monoxide poisoning. Uh, we have a, had a fire uh, due to the generator igniting the, the fuel that was too close to the generator, igniting this, this in the, indoors, in st inside of a garage that ignited the house and, and caused a great amount of loss. Um, obviously, we had the, this today at about noon was the uh, call out when we, uh, on the West Bank, when they responded and found the uh, folks that had succumbed to the, the uh, carbon monoxide. Uh, just this afternoon off of Labar, we had a gentleman uh, fueling a generator between two houses, set the two houses on fire and sustained some burns which he is being treated for. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about what happens you know, so we can, can understand this. First and foremost, there's an acceptable range when you're dealing with different things, chemicals and, and gases and things of that nature. Carbon monoxide at 50 parts per million becomes dangerous at that point. The measurements today in the home where the, uh, the victims were found were o was over 680 parts per million. So we're talking hundreds and hundreds of times over where we, where we should be. And, and I said 50, in a house, in a normal household, you're gonna have the CO content, the, the uh, parts per million gonna be two uh, on a good day. So it was very, very extremely high. What happens when this, uh, first off, if you're sleeping and that gas and that vapor gets into your house, you're not gonna wake up. But if you're around, you, if you are awake and you have a generator running, and someone feels nauseated, or, or achy, or you know, flu-like symptoms, or lethargic, feel like they're tired. If they're a personality that they're always talking and all of a sudden they're quiet, or vice versa. If something's not right, it's probably not right. So the things you can do, uh, if you're feeling that way, or if you think you have a problem, or if your carbon uh, monoxide detector goes off, immediately exit the building. Turn off whatever's creating that vapor, the generator or, or whatever it may be. Uh, open windows and wait 20 minutes or so before you, if you re-enter. And of course, dial 911 and call for the, the professionals to come out and, and, and uh, check on what's going on. Um, we come in, we're, you know, I sat before this meeting and I said, I have to come up with more. We have to do more. Um, people have come to me and, and as the parish president said, they, they, people have thanked us for what we do. Well, now I'm going to call for action. I'm going to ask people, um, I, I'm fortunate to, to be married to a wonderful woman who's a retired teacher, so I'm going to give homework today. Um, I would like you, we're gonna, we got a thing we found and I really like it, it's called the 320s. Um, it's put the generator 20 feet away from your house, let it cool off 20 minutes before you fuel it. And then uh, the cost of a, a detector is about $20. Now, we're in a situation right now where it's very difficult to buy one. So if you have a generator and you're running and you don't have a carbon monoxide detector, please open two windows in your house to cause a draft, if you will, away from where the generator is, because it's going to be 20 feet away from your house. I'm going to pretend you're out there, right? Right. Okay. So open those windows and leave them open a, a bit the whole time that generator is running if you have to do that. But I, I insist that the, you, if you're going to continue to use generators, you have to get a carbon, dox, a carbon monoxide uh, installed in that. So the, the other part of your homework is going to be, we live in a social media world. I'm asking folks to, to spread that word on your social media uh, pieces and, and things that you do. The, I, I'm, I honestly, you know, I'm an older guy. I don't, I don't do a lot of social media. I should, but I'm, I'm dependent on you all to do that. And then the last thing is the physical part of it. Tomorrow, go walk around your neighborhood, and I'm asking you to find four places. Knock on their door if they have a generator running, and talk to them for a moment. Ask them how they're feeling, then discuss the things we're, discussed, we, we're talking about tonight. And, and, and as a side note, we just, I just learned this, Madam President, and I'd like to make a statement about it. The railroad, we found today uh, that the railroad is starting to operate. And we are finding that the arms may or may not be on generator power. So please, if you're ca crossing a railroad track, treat it like we're doing everything else, a stop sign, look both ways, and then proceed with caution. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Chief. Um, next, we'll have um, Patrick Hamby from Entergy.
right, thank you very much. Uh, Patrick Hamby on behalf of Entergy Louisiana. If you're watching me on TV, you may have seen me kind of go off to the left and the right. I'm getting word that we're getting uh, some power on over by the airport. Um, that was one of our obvious priorities too, in addition to the other critical care facilities such as hospitals. Um, very quickly, I'm gonna begin with the damage assessment. We're making significant progress through that uh, damage assessment progress. We're well over, you know, halfway done there. Specifically in the Metairie Kenner area, we're 75% complete. On the West Bank, we're 64% complete. Um, on the West Bank, that you have challenges at this point going forward. We're gonna continue to do the damage assessment, but as you go further south, closer down to that Grand Isle path where the storm came in, there's gonna be many obstacles and many challenges completing that uh, at the same pace we have to date. Nonetheless, it will go on until every single uh, piece of damaged equipment is identified, assessed, and replaced. Um, and I'm gonna give you a point of reference and forgive me if I'm not as fluid as I normally am. This is kind of a field notes. Everything is, is going on the fly here very quickly and coming at us in many different directions. So during Hurricane Zeta last year, first of all, it was a much better time. If you could choose to have a hurricane, the weather was not nearly as hot. It was, you know, in the end of October, which was a blessing, if you want to call it that, for a hurricane. Uh, we had 2,700 poles across the whole region, you know, associated with that storm. Just with this damage assessment we've done so far, we have well surpassed that number just for Jefferson Parish alone. So we all know a catastrophic, super, super high level category four, pushing the you know, barriers of almost busting into a category five. Um, let's see here. So along with the thousands of down poles, obviously you have the spans of wire that are tied up, strung up there. We have the transformers, the cross arms, a plethora of other pieces of equipment that are down on the ground. Everyone's aware of that. Please stay away from that down. The down lines, any part of that down equipment, the generator issue is a huge factor, not only for the people using them because of the things that Chief Tibbetts talked about with the, the poisoning and also the p capability of a, a fire, that, but it also, as it, if it's installed improperly, can backfeed onto our system. Even though we don't have energy supplied power out there on those lines, an improperly stalled generator can cause backfeed, and if you touch it, it could harm you, if not kill you. So stay away from down power lines. We have ongoing distribution work, it's preparation work, in anticipation of the transmission work that we're doing, uh, coming back up and online. We're doing these in parallel, and that means we're doing them at the same time. They're different groups, different qualification certifications of employees. So you have the distribution team working at the same time, the transmission team's working. If you think of the wooden poles, that's one animal. It's not an easy job. You think of the large steel structures, that's like the distribution system. On steroids, it's much more involved and in-depth, but we're working those at the same time. So we had talked about a couple of days ago the first light of hope coming in from the eastern side of the storm that had the least damage to our eight transmission lines that come up those three corridors to feed the greater New Orleans area. Uh, with that is taking progress, it's taking off, it's moving, the, the dominoes are starting to fall. So we're moving to the west, like I said, towards the uh, nine mile unit. We have actually got first light in Jefferson Parish, that is starting at the parish line, coming to from the Oshner main campus Again, we said we're gonna focus on the critical care facilities, such as hospitals, and then also critical facilities such as airports and other critical facilities across the uh, parish. We've worked our way down Jefferson Highway to the HUEP, and we're lighting up that as we work our way towards the west, and ultimately have that transmission line connected to Nine Mile, which will give us even more opportunity to bring on larger amounts of customers once that plant is connected. And ultimately, we want to tie into the loop coming from the north. So additional resources, we have over 20,000 linemen from as far away as New York City, even all the way over to the, the west. Last I looked, I think we had 36 states representing this effort, coming to help this community rebuild. That's across the whole state. Um, the large majority of those, obviously, are in the hardest hit areas the most populated areas with the most equipment and the most work to be done, which is this area, this region right where we're at. So with that comes a lot of challenges. We have more resources coming as we speak, actually. So uh, 
the lodging obviously is not available here locally, right? You have hotels that have damage to them. They don't have power. They don't have the luxury of air conditioning. All of the things that you would expect in a normal day, they're not there anymore. So we have those challenges. We also have what the parish is going through, <clears throat> which is fuel. Everybody's dealing with that, even if you're a resident or if you are a contractor working for Entergy or one of our own. Fuel is a hot commodity. It's sporadic, but it's becoming available slowly but surely. The sweltering heat, the humidity, that makes things all the worse. Uh, you think about what we're wearing, you know, this, this light shirt compared to what our linemen wear, their protective equipment that they, that they have to have on them. They have fire resistant clothing. It's basically almost like you're dressing for wintertime, going out in this heat, in this sweltering humidity, heat and humidity and doing physical manual labor, getting those lights back on. So please, you know, it, 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 like the parish president said, if you see our guys and you have the opportunity, please don't approach, but maybe, you know, honk the horn if you're driving, please, I would like you to stay off the streets. That was a bad example, but if you can find a way to say thank you, that would be much appreciated. Because our goal, we're on the same team as you, we want the lights on, we want them on faster than you can imagine. That is our goal, that is what we are here for, that is our sole purpose. To get another perspective, we all talked about Hurricane Ida, and we saw what it did to Grand Isle when it made landfall. Catastrophic damage, it obliterated homes, businesses, communities. Chief Brian Adams had said three to five years to rebuild that to get it back to normal where it was before this storm came a couple of days ago after he had visited. Consider where the storm was this morning, 1400, over 1400 miles away up in New York. It's just the remnants of Ida. They had flash flooding, tornadoes, fatalities. That's the remnants. That's over 1400 miles away four days later. We took a direct hit and that is the severe, the reason for the severe damages the marathon we're going through, the tedious process that we must go through to get the lights back on. We do not want any safety issues. We do not want any fatalities. We want it to be safe, quick, efficient, and overall a positive experience to help build the community back stronger and get you back in your homes. The most important thing, and I've been pushing and pushing and we've all been working, there, there are many different factors involved. You have generation, transmission, distribution, those are the main buckets. We're all working together to make sure we can get the estimated restoration times out there in a public view so that customers can look at it and have a point of reference, hey, it's gonna be another week or it's gonna be another you know, week and a half for my area. We want that information to be there. It is not ready yet because we don't want to set false expectations. We wanna make sure that we have accurate information so that you don't come home to something that you thought was going to be put on and then you end up stuck in a community in a home in a community that can't support you that doesn't have power so we want that number to be accurate and on the flip side we don't want to say that it's going to be out for too long and then some commercial business or even a resident they rent a, a generator and then the lights come on the next day so that's a delicate balance we want to make sure that the information is as accurate as possible that being said, we had a call, uh, the parish president and our CEO, Philip May, this evening. We're working on getting those numbers out tonight. That is the goal. If not tonight, it will be early tomorrow. So what I can say at this time is we're expecting, as far as estimated restoration timelines go, um, significant progress made by the end of next week. So, and that would be focused, you know, on the northern part of the parish with least amount of damage and I say that it's a relative term there's damage everywhere but not as bad as it is down south but significant progress by the end of next week there's more to come on where that progress will be made and how long others will be out hopefully by the end of today if not early tomorrow so again the safety issue please stay away from down power lines listen to what Chief Tibbetts say says about uh, generators you can go to our website, we have tips there. If you don't have power, which is a quite uh, a chance that you don't, just listen to what Chief Tibbet says. He is a subject matter expert. It is a life or death situation. Be safe and stay away from down power lines. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Patrick. And uh, I wanted to not neglect Shari from the Deaf Action Center who has her <laughs> reinforcement with our theme because we're giving out a lot of information and 
now we we need multiple translators so thank you both for being here um next uh speaker is dr jerry satanovich our jefferson parish coroner thank you thank you president um uh, i'll tell you i want to start by uh uh j just a personal note uh you know last night i um after this press conference i uh uh went over to the parks of blackman's for dinner uh, and to cool off and on my way home at about 10 o'clock last night i saw no less than 25 or 30 law enforcement vehicles out there lights on patrolling and i can't tell you how comfortable that made me feel as to the safety in our community so i would really want to publicly thank all those guys for their hard work uh, regarding the incident today with the carbon monoxide poisoning i went to the scene myself um, and it's you know, you know every death is heartbreaking this one was especially so um, it's all you know, um, you know these poor folks it was a woman uh, 54 years old and her two children that were aged uh, 23 and 17 a girl and a boy um, their generator was brand new the box was still inside the house okay so I mean you know you I don't want to regurgitate what what coach uh, coach Tibbetts <laughs> what chief Tibbetts said because he is spot on but I do encourage everybody to do their homework like he suggested thank you very much Thank you, Dr. Satanovich. Our next um, speaker is our Director of Emergency Management, Mr. Joe Valiente. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, at this time, the EOC remains fully activated. Uh, we are supporting the efforts of uh, our teams that are in Grand Isle and Lafitte and the Special Needs and the Louisiana National Guard. Also, we are working closely with our FEMA partners who are providing valuable information to us on individual assistance that we'll be putting out later. Um, we haven't received any calls today about vehicular accidents involving or becoming entangled in downed power lines. So hopefully that trend will continue. Um, one last point, we received three calls today about individuals who noticed that the water pressure is starting to increase and they wanted to know if it was safe if they could start using their ice maker again. And I checked with Mark Drews and he said absolutely not. There's still a boil water advisory in effect. You cannot use anything for any purpose that comes out of the faucet at this point. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Um, the next person I want you to get updates from is Sarah Babcock, our Chief Administrative Assistant. Good evening. I feel like we've had some pretty somber news um, this evening, and unfortunately, I'm going to add to it. Um, so I'm going to start by talking about our evacuation process. Three days ago, we started asking residents of Jefferson Parish to evacuate. At the time, there were plenty of shelter spaces available. Transportation was readily available. Alexandria shelters are full. So people who have been telling me they don't want to evacuate because Alexandria is too far now today have to go to Monroe or Shreveport even further. Last night, five bedridden individuals refused ambulance transport after they had been accepted into a medical special needs shelter, thinking that they would have a better option today. That option was a medical special needs shelter in Baton Rouge that filled within two hours of its opening. And so all five of those bedridden patients are still in their home here in Jefferson Parish with no electricity or medical care. If you want to leave, this is the time. You just heard Patrick come up here and tell you your power is not coming on today it is not coming on tomorrow it is not coming on the next day if you want this opportunity we're asking you to evacuate now while there's still some opportunities that being said there's currently no medical sheltering beds available so we are working hard to reach out to those people to check in with them frequently and to get them the medical care they need here locally until something opens up 
We've been working diligently with the Louisiana Department of Health all day today um, to open up other options. I have missed many uh, leadership calls and things today because I've been so entrenched in trying to find spaces, trying to find nursing staff, trying to find medical supplies. Um, I want to thank a few people who really helped us out today. The New Orleans Health Department was able to give us a number of medical supplies that we needed for um, individuals coming through PARD. Inclusive care um, had a staff member come in to go through their clinics to find us supplies. Project HOPE, which is a volunteer medical group that was um, working in New Orleans, uh, sent their team over today and the Louisiana Department of Health, and um, we've started to receive some federal HHS teams and uh, disaster medical teams arriving um, today. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to provide staffing for us beginning tomorrow. Um, so if you want to be evacuated, we still have the same system set up. You call 504-349-5360. We will triage you and based on your needs, um, pick you up, bring you to PARD, and then be able to put you on a bus out of the area. In that shelter, you'll receive food, medical care, water, and you'll be in the air conditioning out of the heat. And then we will bring you back when things are safe to return. Over the past few days, we've been kind of collecting everyone at PARD and then sending them out in the evening. We've switched that up today and now are moving people out a little bit earlier in the day in order to have uh, less people in PARD at one time. And because the buses are going much further, um, making sure they get there uh, early in the evening so they, you know, hopefully can still get a meal and aren't driving through the night. I really want to thank our transit department who's been working hard. We have a limited number of drivers and they're working the, you know, driving the maximum hours available. And also West Jeff EMS. Um, they did many of the transports after the Lafitte rescues. They have been transporting people by ambulance out of the region, um, you know, and, and making many runs for us that we really appreciate. So far, um, today we had 118 people leave uh, PARD. So over the last four days, we have done uh, 522 people have left by bus and 14 have left via ambulance. Um, on other topics, we did have a little bit of good news. As Patrick mentioned, some of our hospitals have started to regain power, which is a huge win for all of us. Even though those buildings have generator power, sometimes things like labs and radiology aren't always accessible on those generators. And so this is a really good opportunity. Our hospitals are obviously critical for all of us um, you know, to survive. We also had more dialysis clinics and pharmacies open today. Um, we're at a point in time where people really need their medications refilled. So if you are out of meds, there are pharmacies available. Many um, of your health insurance companies have issued waivers for people in the impacted area so you can refill your medications early. You may be able to waive co-pays. Um, Louisiana Medicaid has, has done this, and so um, there are instructions on the Louisiana Department of Health website, um, a number of frequently asked questions there, but you can use Louisiana Medicaid out of state right now, so if you are out of state and you need medical care, you need your prescriptions refilled, you can use it. If you are in other places, do not feel that you need to come back to Louisiana to do that. Um, you can refill your prescriptions earlier than normal, and uh, those copays are waived. And we continue to have oxygen distribution at Fire Station 20 at 4110 Hudson Street in Metairie and Fire Station 81 at 808 MacArthur Avenue in Harvey. Due to limited supply, we are limiting that to one uh, tank per person per day. Finally, I will just mention um, we do have a uh, health, uh, mental health hotline opened here in the state. It's for LA Spirit. The number is 1 800 256 2522. I also just want to mention a few things that were brought to my attention today. You know, it's one thing if we think about us as adults, but you also need to, to be paying attention to your children and the things. Um, limit the amount of news coverage that they are watching to this event. Try and keep them on a normal schedule. Help them 
talk through things or, or use things like art and other activities. Um, but this hotline um, can also help give you tips and connect you to resources um, if you are seeing any signs um, that children are struggling through this event. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sarah. Next speaker is um, Mr. Brian Adams, our director of West Bank Fire Services. Thank you, Madam President. So, so I guess today was a bad day, a bad day of news, but there are brighter days ahead of us, right? So last, uh, this morning around 1 a.m., we were called to a structure fire in uh, Barataria, which is uh, the opposite side of the bayou from Lafitte, which is not accessible at the time because of the bridge that's out. Um, we have no fire equipment on that side of the bayou, so there was nothing we could do to, to stop the fire or slow it down. So um, before I got on scene, it had moved to two structures. There were two, two, two houses on fire. Uh, we tried to access it with our boats, the fleet of boats that we have, and because of the debris and, the, and, the, and stuff that's in the water, we weren't able to get it. Matter of fact, we ran aground with one of the boats. Um, our guys really worked hard to try to get there. We called the sheriff's office out, as Sheriff Lapinto had mentioned earlier. We were able to use the sheriff's airboats and those, load those airboats with portable pumps and some hose and some firefighters and began to fight the fire. So by, the, by I guess around 3.30 a.m. this morning, it had stretched out to four houses and then five houses and then six. And, and we got to a point where we kind of just drew a line in the sand and said, okay, we're not gonna let it get past here. Um, we all dug in. We had about 20, 25 guys out on the fire scene and uh, we were able to stop it and save. So there were 17 houses on the street and we lost six. Um, it, it's just heartbreaking, you know? So these people lost everything they had there was six to eight feet of water in every one of the houses on that side of the bayou, and then, then this happens, and they lose everything, right? So they had no opportunity to come home, to come to their house, to get their belongings, see their belongings, um, or, or even have a visual of what their house looked like after the storm, right? So hopefully the bridge gets in place. We're able to get some equipment moved to that side of the bayou with some uh, medical equipment as well so we can start responding to the needs of the people who have stayed there and who have waited for us to get over and start clearing the roads and begin a recovery. Uh, again, uh, it's just a tragic, tragic, tragic loss. Um, I just couldn't imagine it. So my guys, we were standing across the bayou just looking at it and just, I just, it, you know, we want to react. We want to go do something and we just couldn't. So um, thank you to the departments who showed up. Thank you to the sheriff and his team for coming out who showed up within 30 minutes after we called them. We were able to, to shed some light and save those other 11 or so houses that we saved. So um, thank you, I appreciate everything that's happening and I really believe that we do have brighter days ahead. Uh, one team, one heartbeat. Thank you, Chief Adams. Um, we have some council members joining us tonight. So we have councilman at large for Division A, Ricky Template. Uh, Councilman for District 3, Byron Lee, and Councilman for District 4, Dominic Impostato, and I believe many, some of these members want to address you this evening. <laughs> Changing the mood. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, today has been, in many ways, a very difficult one, but yes, it, yet it's also been a very rewarding one. Today, a personal friend of mine who I grew up with two streets over lost her life along with her two children, Dimitri Johnson. She grew up on Carmadale Street, Marrero. She was a wonderful person. If you ever met her, she was, she was, someone whom you would never forget because she had such a giving spirit. And so the tragedy of her loss uh, is deep within the community in which I grew up because everyone who knew her loved her. And so 
I offer prayers to her daughter who uh, is out of town and has to come back and deal with this tragedy, the loss of her mother and her two siblings. And so many in the community, their hearts are broken and so is mine because if you knew her, you loved her. While serving uh, the neighborhoods and the communities, of course, the one thing that we've done quite a bit over the last several days is go out and look uh, to find out the needs of the people in the district. And so we've been able to help a lot of people through uh, many of the uh, services that we've been offering, but also we've had an opportunity to increase our engagement in communities uh, who fall below the median income in Jefferson Parish. And so I'm glad to announce that we will have uh, water stations over in Old Harvey, which is on Estelot Street in Harvey. At the community center, we'll be uh, offering water to those in the community who are in need, and there are many, and also at Woodmere Gym, we will be doing the same. Life Center Church on Ames Boulevard will be providing food. They have a nonprofit who came in and wanted to cook for the people here in our communities who were in need. And so on tomorrow at, at 2 o'clock and 6 o'clock p.m., uh, they will have meals, I'm sorry, it will be tomorrow at 12 o'clock and 6 p.m. over at Life Center, tomorrow on Ames Boulevard. It's one block past the Rouses. And I'm also very proud to announce that we also are meeting uh, the, the community needs for those on the East Bank in the Jesse Owens area, as well as by Williams Playlot, which is in the Bunch Village area, which is right off of Airline Highway, and we will be providing food, water, and other, sub, uh, other things to, that, to those from at 2 o'clock and at 6 o'clock on both uh, to, uh, Saturday and Sunday. And so for anyone who's listening to this, please let everyone know that we will be coming to the community to ensure that you've not been forgotten and we will give you those things that many people are blessing us with to be able to give to our communities. And we thank all of our nonprofit partners who and our ministries who have decided to get involved with this recovery. It's a very tough one. It's one that's going to be around for quite some time. And many of those who are without means cannot leave and they need certain assistance. So thank, uh, I want to thank the administration for all that it's doing. But I also want to thank our other partners for helping out and contributing to supporting the needs in our community. Thank you. Uh, Dominic Impostato, Councilman for District 4 uh, in Jefferson. I wanted to address two, uh, for those watching, uh, especially those out of town, but to address two issues that seem to be coming up predominantly in our council offices, questions from the public, um, and issues that uh, seem to be most commonly coming up now uh, as we are at this phase in, in our recovery. Uh, number one, the, the, the number one question we seem to be getting is from people who have evacuated, are we ready to come back? Is it time for us to come back? And, and I'm not going to suggest whether you should or you shouldn't. That's every, every person, every individual, and every family's independent decision. But I would ask that everyone understand that if you do, have a certain set of expectations. What can you expect? Unfortunately, as Chief Tibbetts and, um, and West Bank Fire Chief uh, Brian Adams have said, unfortunately, our risk of fire hazards is dramatically higher than it is in our normal life. 70 calls for service, to give you an idea, that's 70 times an ambulance was called, uh, excuse me, a fire truck was called out in the last 24 hours. That is substantial. That is incredibly greater than what we're used to here in Jefferson Parish on a normal day. So if you come back, please understand that is the kind of risk you're willingly 
facing. Uh, in addition, power tonight, no disrespect to energy. I have no doubt. I've seen the trucks out there. They are in pockets with major, major restoration efforts throughout East Jefferson and West Jefferson. Today, we went from Lafitte all the way through Kenner, and, and we see pockets of, you know, dozens and dozens of trucks in certain areas trying to, um, trying to undertake major restoration efforts. They didn't give us an estimate tonight of when our power will be back on for a reason. They're not able to tell us. So come back. Don't do it under the expectation that, oh, tomorrow it's going to be on. Next week it's going to be on. Uh, they haven't told us that. <laughs> so please don't, be, don't misunderstand. Now, when we get an estimate from energy, you're going to see it. You're going to see it on the parish website. You're going to see it in parish press release. You're going to get the information. We're not putting that out because we don't have it. We don't know it. And as has been explained, the pressure that that has put on every other system, the lack of power that that puts on our water system, which is on its way back to improving, but the challenge that then puts on our sewer system, that's, that challenge is going on right now. So if you're looking to come back, please understand and accept you're in, you, you're in a parish that right now has a tremendous amount of challenges in providing those necessary services because of the infrastructure damage we have uh, starts with power and, and bleeds into every other aspect of our, of our operations. The last thing is, uh, in terms of what to expect, um, the parish is not able to personally provide food and drinking water to every family here. That's a challenge. Those resources come from third-party sources. Parish President Lee Shang invoked uh, the state, the GOSEP program with the point of distribution units that are providing MREs, water, and ice to families. But that is certainly in limited stock and limited availability at those individual sites. We're glad to have that. But it's those third-party sources that are able to provide uh, those that, those relief outlets to our community. As, Bar as Councilman Lee also stated, we have third-party donation sites, and there will be specific points where those donation sites uh, will be able to be coordinated for food pickups and other resources. But there is no guarantee. We cannot guarantee what will be available or when it will. We'll do our, the mo what we do know is the moment we have resources, you as our constituents, Jefferson Parish residents, you will have access to it immediately. But please understand if you come, there's no guarantee of what that will be and when it will be. Uh, the second set of questions I, I'd like to discuss real quick has to do with FEMA disaster assistance. As Parish President uh, discussed, we have not only, and we're getting a lot of questions about TARPs, the parish has given out what parish resources we had somewhere in the neighborhood of 2,000 FEMA talks to individuals that then families have to uh, install themselves or have someone do. At this point, we are pushing everyone to engage and invoke the FEMA blue tarp system that the Corps of Engineers uh, is administering. That resource and that, uh, the information is available on FEMA.gov on their website. Please access that system, and we want everyone who thinks they need a tarp uh, needs their roof tarp, please go to that si that uh, process. That is far and away the best avenue to get your roof protected. Uh, I can tell you today, I worked with a, co a FEMA contractor today to find a staging site where they will be deploying uh, those resources starting within the next 24 to 48 hours, hopefully. Uh, that, that base in particular is in the North uh, Metairie and Kenner side where there's substantial damage, but there will be those all over the parish. That's the best resource for the topping of the roof. And then the last thing is FEMA disaster assistance. We're getting tons and tons of questions about the availability of that disaster assistance. And as someone who dealt with this same issue back in Katrina, we know the challenges that our residents and households have in uh, taking advantage of those resources and qualifying for it and everything, please still, as Parish President said, apply for it. Tomorrow, our council will be meeting with a FEMA representative because this is their program, not ours. We're just the conduit to get the information out. But we're going to be addressing a number of the concerns that we have received related to how to qualify for those resources. And we're going to hopefully get your questions answered. Uh, but please go to FEMA's website, apply for it, get yourself registered. Hopefully, we'll have more answers. And as we do, as we understand the federal government regulations and their process, we'll push that information out to you. Thank you. Thank you, Parish President. Also, I'll, I'd be remiss if I did not mention the support and the help that we've received from 
State Representative Rodney Lyon, Lyons, uh, Kyle Green, State Representative Kyle Green Jr., as well as Joe Bowie. They are part, uh, they've been a part of our, the solution to be able to get water and other products to be able to uh, be, donate, do no, be donated uh, in our community. And I'd like to thank their colleagues from North Louisiana who helped to be able to find uh, the, uh, uh, those, the, 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 org the philanthropic organizations that have provided uh, those supplies that, that our community will benefit from. Thank you, and my apologies to Mark Drews that we changed up the agenda today, and so we got out of order. So uh, Mark Drews is our public, in, um, public works director. His teams have been out um, really restoring this community in, in all, all sorts of ways. So um, Mark Drews. Thank you, Madam President. Again, I'm just going to start with thanking our 685 plus public works employees who worked another 12 hour plus shift today to restore our vital infrastructure. Uh, update, we'll start with the water system on the East Bank. It's good news. We started the morning at about 53 PSI at our plant and we were able to maintain that through the day, which tells us that we now have the ability to fight fires on the East Bank and water is being delivered to homes sufficient for your daily activities. Uh, we still have a lot of work to do. As of today, we now have 136 breaks that we had identified. We have completed repairs on 54 of those, which means the other 82 breaks, we've isolated them by turning valves adjacent to them so that we can stop the flow of water through those areas until we can get to those repairs. Uh, the West Bank, uh, again, we started the day at 60 PSI. Six, normal uh, pressure is 65 to 70 PSI. We maintain that all day. And since we put in that one meg generator yesterday, we've had no more generator issues, so we have had no temporary loss of pressure on the West Bank. Moving to sewer, uh, which is now our problem of uh, our main focus now. We were able to get to 14 additional lift stations and supply them with either portable pumps or portable generators that can run the existing pumps there. However, that only gives us 119 out of our 530 lift stations that are operating. So we do have 45 vacuum trucks that will service the remaining lift stations to empty those and bring that waste to our treatment plants, which are fully functioning. Today we did get good news in that we finally have three of our stations that actually have energy power. Uh, those are all in the Ashna Hospital area. Uh, with regard to drainage, our focus is on the feet. Uh, yesterday we were able to get up and running either by permanent pumps or a combination of permanent and temporary pumps six stations. So we've been draining Lafitte with six of our stations. Uh, we installed four eight-inch portable pumps today at Rosethorn for additional capacity to drain. We made it to the Crown Point station today and we were inspecting that this afternoon. We made it to the Marrero Street station uh, today, but unfortunately it's a total loss and we will try then to get some temporary pumps to that station. Uh, we tried to get to the Orange Street pump station, but unfortunately we found out we're gonna have to cut our way there, so we'll have that equipment there tomorrow to get to that station. And we also made it across to the Barataria side. We were in the process uh, of my latest update of inspecting the portable pumps that we have on that side. The first one we got to, unfortunately, is a total loss, but we will work that problem as well. Uh, with regard to our streets, uh, our Parkways and streets employees, they cleared another 70 roadways from trees. We took four trees off of houses. We've been doing, removing about the same number uh, each day. That is a tough operation involving a crane and you have to be very careful in what you do, but we are proceeding accordingly. Uh, our traffic division was busy. Five more signals on veterans were restored today. Of course, we don't have power to power them up, but what we're trying to do is fix all the signals on our main uh, arteries throughout the parish so that when the power comes on, we can at least have most of those signals operational. And that gives you an update of where we are with Public Works. Thank you. Thank you so much. I forgot to, um, I happened to check an old uh, email and um, 
on LinkedIn, which I don't even use, and Walmart reached out to me. So I want to thank Walmart. We're expecting a truckload of supplies from them. So I forgot to mention that thank you um, at the beginning of the press conference. And with that, I think we will conclude this evening. Everyone be safe. Thank you for listening. And uh, please remember, we're, we're giving you accurate information here. I know there's a lot going on on social media, but, you know, if you're going to forward information, make sure it comes from an accurate source, okay? We wish everyone um, safety and, and moving on to, to rebuilding our community. Thanks.